I play the ball into their deepest line defender here, number five, and then we'll look to play. So all they've got to do is the opposition are going to try and combine to play through into these areas, and then they're going to look to score in one of these three goals in here, okay? Hi, my name is Warren Hackett. I'm a coach developer in the South East. So what we're going to look at today is a position specific passing practice. What we're going to try and do is create uh, space. We're going to look at supporting positions, but we're really going to look at the before, during, after of the actual pass. The session can be done indoor or outdoor, depending on weather, uh, obviously depending on size, but either or. So we've got a 7v6 passing practice, which is based on position specific. Basically what I've got here is I've just using some players, I'll look to pro progress the session in a second. So what I've got is I've got two centre backs, the five and the six in a deep area here. I've got four, eight and 10, which replicates my midfield three. I've got my two wide players, 11 and seven, which are in the wide areas. They can't come in, nobody can go out to put pressure on them. And I've got my number nine here, which is a focal point, looking to get a one-to-one, one-v-one -one finish with the goalkeeper. But the real aim in the practice is we're looking at the before, during and after. So before we receive the ball to pass, the technique of the pass and obviously the movement after the pass. And then we're looking at passing lanes, opening up passing lanes, combination play and penetration. Basically, you can see the three C's here. I've got two coaches supporting here to be able to serve the ball again. I've got another coach here, if the practice doesn't get to this area, that will obviously recycle the ball for the number nine to get a 1v1. I'll position myself anywhere around the practice within the square, and obviously I can look to play in as and when I want to. So I'm gonna start the practice. The opposition are gonna start with the ball. So what I'd look to do is instead of historically, me starting with the ball here, they're all in a set position, we're gonna do it more from a transitional moment. Okay, because the transitional moment is a, is a constant flow of the game that happens regularly. I'll play the ball into their deepest line defender here, number five, and then we'll look to play. So all they've got to do is the opposition are gonna try and combine to play through into these areas, and then they're gonna to look to score in one of these three goals in here, okay? Obviously, my two defenders are gonna to look to deny them from scoring in, so I've got two players, three goals, so there's still a potential that they can score in the goal. Once the ball reaches this area here, now this is when the session really looks to play. So what I'm looking at here is my 11 and seven can drop down if they want to. Normally I'd have fullbacks in this area, but again, this is just the first part of the practice. The fullbacks will join the practice. So again, I've got passing areas. So if we think about the five lanes, lane one, lane two, lane three, lane four, lane five, seven and 11 occupy one and five. So between four, eight and 10, can we occupy two, three and four? So again, if number five's got the ball here potentially, four might open up into uh, lane four, eight might open up into lane two, and 10 might drop down into lane three. That might just be a way of playing through. Now again, as we're moving, obviously the opposition are gonna move with us. Their three might come up, their five might screen our number nine, otherwise we can play straight over the top. And obviously their two might look to sort of balance off the pitch or jump onto our number 10 now. So again, all I'm looking at, can we keep the ball moving? Ball speed is, in, is essential. So before number five plays the ball into number four, if I think about before the ball comes into number four, he needs to consider his positioning. So his positioning would be, can he receive the ball to be able to play forward? If he's on a straight line here and they're putting pressure on, the only pass that he's able to do is play back. So my first challenge is gonna be, before the ball comes to the, the, the receiver, can you open up your body to be able to play forward? So literally get inside on, where he can either play around corners like this, one touch, or he can simply have a touch to look to play forward. So that'll be one of my big points when I'm looking at playing forward. What, before you receive the ball. During the ball now, we're looking at the pass. So the way to pass during and the technique, does he need to play front foot? Does he need to play side foot? Does it need to be curved? Does it need to be lofted? So in this scenario here, with the five being here and the 10 being there, and he might be screened, my only option might be a longer lofted pass straight into the number nine which is the type of technique that I may need. Now again, if he's dropped off, he's here, it might just be a weighted pass, a weighted pass into the number 10 for him to turn and potentially play to the seven to look to go into the nine. So once that's done, so I've spoke about before, I've now touched on during, the after movement might be, if I have played the 10 and the 10's played the seven, where do I go from now? I now need to consider where I need to move. So my movement might be coming up here to support the play, to be able to keep playing forward. My scanning, my awareness is really, really vital. One thing I wanna take it back to here as well, when we talk about passing, I spoke about the basic things, 
about trying to get on the half turn to be able to play forward. But it's always, there's the deception as well. Because if this player's really, really good and marks me really, really tight, my before might be, can I drop my shoulder to move one way to then move the other way? And my deceptive pass might mean a disguise pass into here rather than just an open pass, I'm gonna to play to you. It might be that my eyes are looking now, but I'll reverse the pass into there to be able to play into, some, into one of my teammates. Okay, so from our 7v6 passing practice now, which was, as I said, was position specific, we're now looking at an 11v11 game, but there's still areas where people are locked in um, to the practice, so let me explain. So again, you've got the five and six zone here, which we spoke about. I've now added the goalkeeper in. I've added now my fullbacks in, my two and three in the wide areas. Now the same rule applies for the two and three. They, uh, they're restricted, they can't go inside the area and nobody can come outside the area. But there is a slight change to seven and eight now. When we're in possession, as you can see, we've got a three versus nine in this squared area here. Our seven and 11 can actually roll inside to the practice, which could potentially then allow the two and three to come up higher. So that would potentially replicate the way we play. So wing, wingers in, fullbacks on the outside. So I'll just drop them back down again. What we've also got here now is I've added a defender in here against our number nine. So this will become like a, a 1v1 when the ball initially goes in. But as the play builds, the aim for our practice is basically, can we get the ball in? Can we get the ball into the nine? Once the nine gets into this area here, either seven, 11 or 10, one player can go and join him. And this becomes a 2v1 finishing practice. Effectively a 2v1, but a goalkeeper making up a 2v2. So that's how the session is going to look to evolve as we go along. But we're looking at the same real principles in respect of timing is going to be really, really key. Combination play is going to be really, really key. But again, we're still going to be focusing on the before, the during and the after. OK, so again, practice will start. I'll give it to the opposition again. Opposition will start the practice. They'll look to play through. If now what they've got is a bigger area here. So if their nine comes in here, their seven can join, their 11 can join as a 3v2 for them to finish. And what I'm looking to do really is to try and get the ball into this area here as often as possible so it can start my practice naturally, okay? So once obviously they've got the ball into the practice here, we're looking at now my five and six to be open, to be receiving the ball. I don't necessarily want them on the same lines. I want my passing options as one to be low, one to be slightly higher. Fullbacks high in the game. Two pivots here, if one's dropping down low, one's gonna be dropping down slightly higher, okay? What I'm looking for the 10 is always to be in between the pockets, in between the lines, looking to receive the ball. And my front three will always look to occupy their back four, back three, depending on what they want to play. Okay, so now the keeper's got the ball, his options will always be first line, second line, or third line. At this moment, we're gonna to look to play, because they've decided to drop off into kind of like a semi-mid block, we're gonna to look to play. So we're gonna to look to play to our five. Now, when we play to our five, there's some like key sort of points that we're looking to do in respect of our game plan. So if the five receives the ball, I always like my four and 10 inside the pitch. The reason we really being for this is, one is to open up the passing lane for the number 10 to be able to receive the ball higher. But the second real thing that I'm doing it is because if I decide to open up wide and we play, try and play the ball through the middle, if we lose it, my, my two centre backs are wide, my two pivots are wide, they can come back and attack. So I'm always looking for my four and eight to be inside the ball. So if five's got the ball there, four and eight on the inside, number 10 looking to receive in the pocket. I know that nine's in a false position at the moment because he'll probably be here, but my seven, 11 and nine are always looking to occupy the back line. Same applies, if the ball gets transferred across to number six, my eight would drop down here, my four would go slightly higher, and again, I'm looking to open up the passing channel for my number 10 to be able to receive the ball there. If they get cute after two or three opportunities and they want to narrow up, we look to play outside. Okay, so we've always got a passing option to be able to play forward. Same thing applies like I spoke to you about. Ball gets played in before the eight's checking. Can I play forward? Can I maybe be deceptive with the way I receive the ball? Can I maybe shift right to play left, shift left to play right to be able to play forward? But really effectively is we're looking at the spacing, so the positioning of our midfield three to be able to play the forward, the positioning of my two and three to be able to receive the ball wide in, the, in lane one. So again, if number three is looking to receive the ball there, I would expect my number seven, sorry, my number 11 to be coming inside the pitch here. So that would potentially open up opportunities for him to run forward. 
and obviously it will give them a problem now. Does their two jump out to our fullback or does their two stay with our 11? If he decides to jump out, can we pop it inside? Can we play forward? One, two maybe, join in and look to finish. And that will be all around the pitch. Can we create overloads in wide areas? Can we look to combine the play? But again, always thinking about before, during and after.